Good morning, folks. We've got big time science news today, an excellent new animation from the ESO, and top viewing recommendations for the rest of the day. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were quiet. Primary features of note are the major coronal holes, definitely an increased earthquake magnitude watch with those ones. Otherwise, things are quieting in terms of eruptive activity, large sunspot group departing on the north with a smaller grouping on the south. Speaking of earthquakes, 6.8 struck at blood echo depths. Luckily, when the big ones strike deep, tends to avoid surface damage. And we're off to space, where the center of M77 has been scoped in tremendous detail. This is the active galactic nucleus of that galaxy, and their modeling of its peripheral effects, it's the environment surrounding the nucleus, it's about a thousand times better than their modeling of the nucleus itself. Here, they confirm the dusty torus, the ring, and the particle effects in the most powerful poloidal magnetic fields coming from that central galactic engine. If you recall, the magnetic system of galaxies forms that north and south fountain effect surrounding the jet of the system. Tiny frustration up next. Boy, was the title of this article exciting. Too bad, it has nothing to do with science. It's their woke agenda of reducing footprint, reducing energy usage. What an excellent use of our tax money, NASA. If you feel like getting angry at someone today, though, watch the latest Project Veritas videos. Now, yes, their method of journalism is snake-like, but it doesn't change what the people get recorded saying on video. Holy crap, that was enraging. If you feel like happier things, Rocky uploaded a little short to the Big Burb channel. We are in the thick of the slow grind. Decided to stop by and answer some of your questions. Down the stretch up next, what do you mean a new type of star? The astronomers are really all over the place these days, blaming a merger event when a micronova or failed nova that failed to clear the fully burned debris of helium is by far the best explanation. Harvard and their sister medical center here doing incredible next-level work on the nanoscale neuronal damage caused by cosmic rays. While the protons and ion hits matter, the neutrons and electrons secondary particles seem to have the greatest effect on individual cells and processes. Remember, one cosmic ray breaks out into a cascade of dozens to hundreds of particles, and those hit every square foot of the atmosphere every second. Up next, who remembers the earthquake-relevant magnetic connections of the fractured crust? The team is back, including the lead author who was one of the four lead authors on the Grand Pre-Earthquake Processes textbook from the AGU, where the electromagnetism preceding earthquakes got its respect. Fortifying the concept here of how certain faults are most at risk, right after a solar storm enhances the innermost Van Allen radiation belt. Folks, both the solar forcing of earthquakes and the health aspect, including those cosmic rays, are found in chapters 6 and 7 of our Solar Terrestrial Physics textbook. Those are the chapters that offer a little break from weather to discuss technology, human health, and earthquake forcing. We greatly appreciate your support. Our books are always at otf.cells.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.